Verilog limitations. In Verilog, what we do, we make all the connections port by port. If there are three IPs and each IP is very complex and there are hundreds of ports, then you need to make multiple connections manually. So the abstraction is very low level. Everything is going to happen at the signal level. Very limited reusability. It would be very difficult for us to debug. Also, Verilog DUTs, basically they are static components which cannot be directly instantiated within system Verilog class-based verification environment because the verification environment is a dynamic object. So, system Verilog introduces a new component called interface. Interface itself is a static component which is similar to module. Doesn't mean that we can instantiate a module within interface. Interface is basically meant for making the connection. So the main object would be signal within interface. I would say interface is nothing but bunch of signals. This is how we make the connection in Verilog. Look at here. But when it comes to system Verilog interface, this is how it's going to be. We have seen the SOC example. Within SOC, basically, we make use of the on-chip bus and with the help of on-chip bus, we connect all the IPs. So with the help of interface, we can create on-chip bus straight away and then we can make use of this interface to make all the connections. It encapsulates communication between hardware blocks. So for you, it would be like a block one is communicating with block two. I don't really need to visualize in terms of signals. An interface is nothing but bundle of signals and it improves the reusability. We can easily customize the interface. We can reuse the interface for various things like DUT and test bench components. Also, it supports always initial task, function, accessions and cover groups. You can think of using all these constructs. It's synthesizable, perfectly synthesizable. We can use it for design. Also, we can convert the interface into virtual interface and use it as part of the test bench. All right. Look at the syntax. Interface, end interface, name of the interface. Optionally, you can have ports for the interface. And you can define some parameters. Primarily, you can define the signals. You can visualize the interface something like this. So if you have hundreds of signals, you don't really need to make the connection signal by signal. You can define interface and you can make the connection like this. So you can visualize something like a male adapter and female adapter. And by connecting these two adapters, you would be able to make hundreds of connections, thousands of connections. That's how you can make the connection using interface. Look at this example. Interface. Mem underscore bus is the name of the interface. It has got the port, clock, end interface. And this is identifier. Optional. Parameter. D bus, A bus. And the size for D bus is 32 A bus. 8 and this is input port clock for the interface and these are all the signals we will look at the example look at here in the top we want to instantiate two modules mem and cpu and we want to make the connections look at the memory module module mem underscore mod input bit type rec clock start input logic type mode input logic type address 8 bits in out wire type data we have to use only wire data type and output bit grant the same signals will be defined differently for cpu mode based on the direction of data flow. So here, CPU mod has got input bit 
clock grant in out data data here is in out and rec and start are output address and mode similarly they are outputs so look at the direction here you can understand this is how the data flow happens between mem and cpu at the top we are instantiating the modules this is verilog this is how we instantiate the modules module name instance and we connect all the signals so here these are all the signals everything is logic except data data is in out so we need to use only wire and this is order based i don't really need to explain the syntax and this is how we make use of all these signals to make the connection between module so here in very log we have to define all the ports like this for mem module we need to define the ports for the cpu we need to define the port also when it comes to making the connection we have to define additional signals this is how we can make the connection the same thing how we can do using interface interface end interface we define the bus dot underscore bus so we make use of this dot underscore bus to make the connection between mem and cpu that's the difference so we define the interface first and we define all the signals except data we define everything as logic because data is in out so we define all the logic data types and data as wire look at this how we define the lower level modules memory module here input clock i'm not including clock as part of interface so i am defining it separate port and this is interface dot underscore bus m bus m bus is the instance so this m bus will create all the ports and module cp underscore mod input clock dot underscore bus the same interface i am using it within cpu mod but the instance is m bus also at the top look at here i am defining the variable clock it is of type logic and dot underscore bus the instance is bus and then i am using this instance to make the connection because the modules have been created using interface so i would be able to use the interface instance to make the connections i don't really need to make the connections signal by signal or port by port so mem underscore mod mem clock comma bus cp underscore mod cpu clock comma bus this is the difference so you define interface use the interface within port list for lower level modules and then instantiate the interface directly within top and use the interface instance to make the connection so one point is if you use the interface instance within port list of any particular module if you use interface instance within port list of any particular module then the interface instance will be inferred as ports then the question is what about the direction of the signals we haven't defined any direction right the direction depends on how you use the signals within module otherwise interface also provides a construct called mod port you can make the directions explicit you would be able to define the directions explicitly using mod port we will look at this later so if you use the interface instance within port list it will be inferred as ports if you use the interface instance within module not in the port list something like this look at here module top end module the interface instance will be inferred as signals so all these signals will be inferred and that's how the connection happens between lower level modules all right thanks for watching this video thank you